Alrighty, now that we've looked at how we can cold email prospects to try to get their attention, we're gonna look at how we can use the phone as well to get their attention. And this is often gonna be a step in the interview process, doing a mock cold call or some sort of cold call scenario. So what we're gonna run through is from start to finish is how we go about cold calling, how we should think about cold calling, and then run through some examples. All right, first thing we should always remember when we are starting the cold call is the goal of the cold call is simply to start a dialogue. Remember, we're not trying to oversell here. We're not trying to get the customer start on the, to sign on the dotted line. All we want to do is start that dialogue, get a conversation going. The call to action almost always in a cold call is going to be try to be to set up that next meeting. Can we book a call with the account executive? Can we get that next meeting set up? Again, we're not trying to get them to sign. We don't need to oversell here. Just start that conversation and get the prospect to commit to talking further. In these examples, uh, in the examples we're doing here, we're going to use Canary as our mock company. So Canary Technologies is a mobile app that hotels use to streamline the guest check-in process and improve guest experiences. Check them out online to learn more or watch back to the previous videos for an in-depth overview there. All right, jumping into some general tips before we get into the nitty gritty. Number one, remember, your objective here is just to set up that next meeting with the account executive. That's almost always the objective on a cold call. You don't need to oversell the prospect on the product. Just get them excited enough to talk to you more. All you're trying to do is pique their interest, get them a little bit excited to learn more. And it's always important to do your research. Know who you're talking to, know their title, what they do, what are they responsible for, so that you can tailor your talk track even better. All right, so jumping into the details. Here's the basic outline of any cold call. Remember, a cold call itself is only going to take anywhere from like three to five minutes. Typically, nothing longer, maybe even shorter. Um, and there's only really five steps here that I like to follow in any cold call. So number one is you're going to intro yourself. You're essentially going to intro yourself to the prospect. You're going to get permission. I like to get permission here to continue to have the conversation. We'll look at what that looks like here in a second. Number two is to... Uh, pitch, pitch your actual product, pitch your solution. Uh, what you're trying to do is here is just get their attention and generate some curiosity so that they want to listen and talk more with you. After you pitch, you're probably going to ask them one to three questions. These are short to the point. We're not having this huge drawn out interrogation here, but this is helpful for us because when we ask questions, we learn more about the prospects and we can start to discover some pain points that we might be able to use later on down the road. And then we're going to wrap up really quickly with a quick proof point to build some credibility, talk about some other similar customers that we work with, and then go right into the next steps, try to secure that next call and line up that next meeting. And we're gonna look at all this individually here and then run through some examples. Okay, so let's look at the introduction. Now there's a lot of ways to do a cold call introduction. Typically, the one that's worked best for me and lots of my colleagues in the past is by simply introducing yourself, state why you're calling, and then ask for permission to continue. And the reason that I like to ask for permission is because it immediately disarms the prospect. Remember, this is a cold call. They're not expecting your call. They probably don't want to talk to you. They're probably busy. They probably got their own stuff going on in their lives. But if we come to them kind of hat in hand, disarm them and give them almost a little power, you know, put the ball in their court, they're probably more likely to talk to you than if you just try to ramble a bunch of words at them and pitch them really quickly. What's probably going to happen is they're going to hang up with you or they're going to get frustrated or they're immediately going to be annoyed with you. So this is how I start every single one of my cold calls. I would say, let's say I'm calling Mark. I'd say, uh, ring, ring, Mark answers hello. I say, hey, Mark, this is Mitch from Ramped Careers. Did I catch you at a bad time? Now, Mark's going to say one of two things. He's going to say yes or no here. And uh, if he says no, I say, okay, great. You mind if I tell you why I'm calling? And then you can tell me if it makes sense for us to keep talking. So what I've done here is I've told Mark exactly what's happening. I'm going to tell you why I'm calling. If you like what I have to say, or you want to keep talking, let me know and we can move forward. If not, the ball's in your court. You can shut this down at any point. You have all the power. So again, I'm giving the mark the power. Now he feels in control because what typically happens on a cold call is the prospect's scared. They're worried that you're gonna sit there and talk their ear off for 30 minutes. They don't wanna talk to you to begin with. And uh, they're just trying to figure out how do I get this person off the phone? So in this case, I'm telling him that you can get me off the phone. Just let me tell you at least what I'm calling. 
That's why I like this intro the best. It's a safe intro. It works nine times out of 10. Now let's say if Mark says, uh, I say, hey Mark, did I catch you at a bad time? He says, yes, this is a terrible time. Then I can lead with this exact same sentence. I can say, okay, totally understand. I called you out of the blue. You mind if I tell you why I'm calling really quickly? And then you can make, you can tell me if it makes sense for us to talk at a later date. So again, I'm just going to go with that same ask. Now Mark's going to say one of two things then. He's going to say yes or no. If he says no, I, I, after you know two no's, I got to tell him. I got to let him go, right? I can't just keep him on the phone. So I say, okay, no worries, Mark. Uh, mind if I shoot you an email? And then you can decide if it makes sense for us to talk at all. I'm, that's my last ditch effort. And then I'm done. I'm going to hang up. Uh, but typically people will give you, you know, 30 seconds to tell you why you're calling. That's why I like this introduction. introduction. All right. So after the intro, you know, I've pitched him. I've asked him why I've, I've asked him if I could tell him why I'm calling. And he said, yes, go ahead. Now I got to, I got to lead with a good pitch here to pique his interest and try to get him to keep talking with me. So you probably recognize this pitch here from the earlier videos. This is the same pitch I would use on any cold call. I'm going to tailor it to Mark and his company. I'm going to mention the pain points. I'm going to uh, talk about uh, talk about some alternatives he might be using to pique his interest. Maybe he's doing these already. Maybe he's still feeling his pain. And then I'm going to end with a question. I'm going to end with a question that ask him if anyone in his company is dealing with this. I immediately want to engage Mark and try to get him into the conversation. I don't just want to talk at him, but I want to engage in the conversation. So if I was calling from Canary, I might say, Awesome, Mark. You know, we work with similar hotel management companies to you with over five properties. Again, I'm tailoring this to him. We work with hotel management companies similar to you all with over five properties that are experiencing a high volume of credit card chargebacks and potential fraud. Maybe those companies have, you know, tried getting customers to send over personal email by fax or email, but just found that chargebacks are high and guests continue to complain about the experience. Does that sound like anything you or maybe someone on your team is dealing with today? So that's the pitch, right? I'm tailoring this as much as I can so that he can relate to it. Mark or whoever I'm talking to can feel some of this uh, pain and some of this value prop that I'm, I'm throwing at him here. And I end with a question to get him immediately to respond. Now, Mark is going to respond and he's either going to say um, yes or no. And really, no matter what he says, I'm probably going to lead with this question here. Interesting. Can you elaborate? So let's say I, I asked Mark this, hey, is this, this you know, a lot of chargebacks, does that sound like anything someone in your company's dealing with? He's gonna say yes or no. If he says, uh, yeah, actually it is. I say, interesting, can you elaborate? Now I get Mark talking even more. If he says, no, it's not. I say, oh, wow, interesting, can you elaborate? So I'm asking the same question, I'm changing up the way I ask it a little bit, but I want Mark to keep talking here. So if he has a lot of chargebacks, he might say, yeah, you know, it's a huge problem for us and uh, it's something that we're trying to solve at, you know, right away. Or he might say, no, not a problem at all for us. Um, you know, we already got this taken care of. So then I'd probably ask my second question here, which is, oh, can you walk me through your current process for handling chargebacks? So if he has a problem, I want to know, what are they doing today? Why is it a problem? If he doesn't have a problem, I want to know, why don't you have a problem? because he still might just be trying to get me off the line. I don't know if he actually has a problem or not. Maybe he's using another solution. Maybe he's not a good prospect for me to talk to. That's okay. But I wanna ask him one or two questions here just so I can get some more info from him. So I probably lead with something like this. Can you elaborate? I probably ask him to walk me through his current process for X, Y, and Z. And then maybe these one of these last three here, like how long has this been an issue? What tools or systems are you using today to avoid this? or Maybe how many people on your team, if it if that makes sense. So I could, uh, so Mark says, let's say, let's do an example. Mark says, yeah, you know what? Chargebacks are a huge issue for us. Interesting. Can you elaborate a little bit? Mark might say, yeah, you know, um, last month alone, we had $30,000 in chargebacks and it only seems to be growing every month. Uh, it's a real pain in our butt today. Wow, that's uh, that's pretty tough. I know that, I know Mark, that uh, that can be a huge issue. Can you just walk me through how you how you and the team are handling those today so then mark might tell me oh we do blah 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 for our process this is how we handle those uh but like i said it's still a growing problem and i might just ask you know how long has this been an issue for you or i might ask hey are there any tools or systems you're trying to use today to combat this or i might ask how many people on your team are overseeing this problem today so all I'm trying to do is figure out a little bit more information. This gives me ammo that I can use later in the call or on my next call or when I give this to the account executive. We don't want this to be an interrogation. We want like one to three questions here.
So after I've asked my questions, I'm gonna go right into the last two steps here, which is proof point and then call to action. So proof point, you know what? I'm gonna use what Mark just told me and I'm gonna put it into a customer story. I'm gonna say, you know what, Mark? What you're describing right now with that volume of chargebacks sounds exactly like what one of our other hotels was experiencing last year before they came on board Canary. And they were struggling with that same pain and we were able to help them actually reduce their number of chargebacks all the way to zero by last month simply by using our platform. And then I'm going right into the call to action. It sounds like we may be able to help you reduce the chargebacks as well. Would you be open to chatting a little bit more about this? Maybe 20 minutes next Tuesday at 11 a.m. We can talk through how we'd approach this with your company. So these last two points are pretty rapid fire. You know, once I get some pain from Mark, once I know it's an issue, I'm going right into, I'm going right into here, the proof point. Hey, you know what, Mark? It sounds like what you're dealing with is what a lot of our other customers deal with. We were able to help them by doing this. And then I'm immediately transitioning into the call to action here so that I can so that I can close him on next steps. So it might sound something like, um, um, you know, hey Mark, it sounds like we may be able to help you out. Can we set up 20 minutes Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time to walk through how we'd approach this? If he says, no, not really sure, this makes sense for us. Uh, then I might go to the second call to action here, like, hey, would it make sense for us to connect in a few weeks time? I know now might, now, now might not be the right time. If he says, no, I don't think I don't think it's for us. I might just say, okay, Mark, totally understand. Um, you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't at least try to shoot you over an email with some materials to review. Would it be okay if I shoot an email then at any point in the future, if you think it makes sense, reach out to me. That's probably my last ditch effort and he'll probably say yes to that. When we go for the close here, we want to be as specific as possible as we can. So 20 minutes next Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern time to how we'd walk to show you how we'd walk through this at your company. We want to let them know what's coming, when we're going to talk, make it as specific as possible, make it really easy for them to say yes to. Book that next step right on the call. Don't leave it to an email afterwards. Don't leave it up in the air as far as if we're going to talk or not next time. You want to book that right there on the call. This is one of the most important pieces of the cold call. If you've talked to them this long, you've got to got to got to set up next steps there. So that's the, that's the cold call fundamentals there. Uh, we're gonna run through some examples, look at how we handle objections in the next video.